Stikka Mitjärta Nits My Heart podcast. My name is Maiva and I come to you from Vasa in Western Finland. You can find me on Instagram as Stikka Mitjärta or on Ravelry as Maitessa. Um, it's been a while since my last podcast again and the last time I, I recorded from our summer cottage in the south of Finland. Uh, now I'm back in my regular setup in my work, home office, but I uh, I've actually changed the camera setup so that the white wall where I put up all my graphics um, with all the information about my projects and my yarns and stuff um, is actually in the right place. I've I've changed the camera so that I'm filming with my back camera instead of my my selfie camera, which means that I can get. Uh, and things aren't in reverse when you're looking at yarn labels, for instance. Um, so this is what my room actually looks like. Uh, this episode um, will be called All About the Socks, because I just have masses of socks to show you. Like many other uh, knitters this year and this summer, we have resorted to knitting socks. Maybe it's because it's somehow soothing and calming and, and easy to knit socks uh, in the midst of everything that's been happening. So I will be showing you my finished projects, my, wor uh, my works in progress. Many of them are socks. And I will also just have a quick uh, run through of my box of socks projects from so far this year. I also have some other projects um, finished and in progress that I will show you, but mostly it will be about socks. So let's get started. Um, okay, so my first finished object is actually uh, this tea that I'm wearing, the Azul Tea by Elizabeth Smith. Um, I started this uh, early, in the, right at the beginning of summer, and I finished it fairly quickly. I was working on it the last time I recorded, I think. Um, it's knit in in uh, Katja. Um, oh, they're silk. It's a silk cotton blend. I, I it's it's called. Just a sec. I'll I will just pop by beyond the camera and check. <laughs> Silk Degradé, Silk Degradé mm -hmm. uh, is the name of the yarn. Um, and I will just briefly stand up and so you can see that it starts with this darker um, sections and then it just gets gradually lighter. And then it has these decorative um, stripes at, at the bottom. Um, and there is also a um, a band of of just stocking it running across right below the neckline. Um, I was uh, perhaps expecting the yarn to be a little bit more of a fade um, than it is because it now it actually is striped. <laughs> And I was hoping for a bit more of a fade because that, that's how I kind of envision, envisioned it. Um, but I'm quite happy with this, this as well, now that I've, I've gotten used to it. It's, it's really lightweight, it's airy, it's, it's really very, very good for, for warm weather. It's also good if you, good, works with, with, um, a slightly dressier, dressier outfit if you put like a cardigan or even a, a jacket on top. So yeah, overall, uh, a nice, just a nice summer um, top. Uh, the pattern uh, is actually, in the pattern it's actually described or set out to be uh, a, a sort of a boxy oversized t-shirt and that was my intention as well but when I had actually reached 
the top, the end, and tried it on, I think maybe for the first time, I realized, well, this isn't boxy at all. And I think what had happened perhaps is that I started out fairly loose and because it also had, had these uh, sort of, um, these very loose rows of the stripes at the bottom, it felt really sort of white and, and sort of uh, loose at the bottom. But then as I knitted on, I think maybe my gauge became tighter and tighter. And also there is, there are, there, there's just none of that loose stuff going on here at the top. So it's, it's a fairly fitted tee now, um, which isn't quite what I intended, but it's not, it's okay. I, it's perfectly fine to wear it like this as well. Um, I'll just need to make, do my calculations perhaps a little better next time or, or try it on a little more often. <laughs> um, but overall, I, I think the pattern is really well written. It has these really s s clever uh, constructions in in several uh, places, like the neckline. Um, I don't quite remember now, but it had a really sort of cool way of doing the the uh, in uh, decreases for for making the neckline curved, um, which me meant that it, it's kind of continuous rather than becoming sort of staged like it sometimes does if you just increase or decrease on one row on or every other row or so so that was cool it also had some nice a nice way of, of putting the the bottom of of the sleeve holes um, or joining them at the bottom making it it look really nice and smooth so those kinds of details were were nice um, I like I like a pattern that pays attention to those details and also explains them well. Uh, I, I've read that some people had complained a little bit that the armholes were, or the sort of openings, <laughs> arm openings were actually a bit a little bit too too small or too shallow um, in the pattern for for the size sizes um, if you follow the pattern. I think maybe if I made if this had become boxier, as intended, um, I would agree that the armholes could have been just a little bit deeper, then, and that would have been perfectly easy, of course, to to remedy and to to modify while working if you had thought about it at that point. So those sort of things, but but for now it's perfectly fine as it is. So that's my summer uh, garment project, actually. I don't think I've actually finished any other uh, garments. So this is, this is the summer, but I'm happy I've at least finished one, <laughs> a, summer, a summer garment this year, the Assault Tea. Uh, and another uh, project that I wanna show you is this one that's, that's uh, behind me. I haven't actually shown this on the podcast before, no. Um, I, it's now propped up on a pillow, but maybe you can see the pattern. Um, so this is a circular shawl, but I'm actually, I made it more as a lap blanket. Oh, let's see now. <laughs> It's huge. Um, and it has these scalloped, the edging is, is scalloped like that. I don't know, does that show at all? So it's worked from, worked from the middle um, upwards and, and just the rows keep getting longer and longer um, and this is the the summer rose shawl uh, it's a pattern by a designer called Mario mm, capital M Mario <laughs> um, whose real name I never forget but I, I might put it up here 
Um, he actually passed away about 18 months ago. I wasn't aware of that until I actually almost finished this one. I have followed his design career somewhat at a distance and I know that he was very, very prolific. He, and particularly circular shawls um, and so, so talented. And there, and to come in his memory, all of his designs are now free on Ravelry, which I think is incredibly generous. Um, such a treasure there, if, if you are into uh, lace and, and lace circular shells. Um, so now, and this for me was entirely a process project. Now, I mean, this is, it's not trendy. It's not uh, perhaps in fashion. It's not even that sort of wearable or usable. I mean, if you want to make a blanket, you know, you, you, you can use this as a blanket. And that was my idea as well. It's 120 centimeters across. So, you know, for, for a, a lazy afternoon nap, you can just pull this over and it will be perfectly fine. But generally, I just wanted to knit it because I love knitting lace. I love the process of, of um, the variety, the variety that, that lace brings. You, you, there's something new happening almost every row. Um, and still, it's repetitive. So when you go around, you don't have to, once you've made four, four or five repeats, you, you actually know what, what the repeats are going to be like. So you don't have to sit and stare at the, at the chart all the time, at least not once, once you get more accustomed to, to knitting this way. And then you, and you can quite easily read, also read the pattern and, and check to see if, if there is a mistake, then you, it's, it's not too difficult to, think back and, and uh, correct it. So this for me is just about passion. This is maybe even my favorite kind of knitting. Knitting after socks, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also I for this I've used leftover yarn from my uh, sea blush sweater, which I knit earlier or finished earlier this year. Um, I had lots and lots of Holst Super Soft left over. So I used, I used this yarn I th and I thought I would just, excuse me one second, I have a slight camera uh, problem. <laughs> back again, back again. Um, yeah, the, the Holst Super Soft, the colorway poppy. Um, I had, I don't know how many balls, perhaps three or four, perhaps three balls um, left over. And uh, I didn't want to knit another garment in, in this color. Um, so, so I decided I will knit, I will just um, make a shawl and I will knit as long as the yarn takes me. Um, and then, so actually um, this ended um, at the edge, edge here, I have omitted the very last kind of edging or the border that would actually finish it off. Um, and the yarn ran out just before that, that uh, started. So that was good. So I was able to, instead I just finished it with kind of two rows of, of um, uh, garter stitch. And then just pin when I'm blocking it, I just pinned it out to make these columns, and that worked just fine. So that has been a very for me an enjoyable an, an enjoyable project, and I, I think I will definitely. It's one of those comfort projects when whenever I feel like oh I need I need to knit something just for the sake of knitting, I will turn to Mario for another of his. Patterns. And the good thing about circular shawls, I mean, they're not the most practical to wear, but you can use them for other things, um, is that you don't have to knit any, any pearl. There are no wrong side rows. There are no pearl rows, actually. Even though every second row is, is kind of a transition row, maybe just um, knit stitches. But if you were anything back and forth, you would actually have to purl those, those stitches, but here you don't have to purl at all. I love that. 
Yeah, so that is the summer rose. Okay, now let's head into the socks. I'll start with, with the, some that go kind of way back that I have shown you while they were in progress and almost finished. Um, these are the winter is coming <laughs> socks and finally finished them um, by Anna Makila. Uh, so I won't talk very much, go into much detail. Other than I will say um, the pattern is still only available, I think, in Finnish in her book, but uh, she posted that she translation is underway and she has also released another pattern in this ver in this series with a very similar sort of uh, setup only the, the sort of swirls have been replaced by flowers and that was called spring is coming so if you're interested in this kind of uh, all over kind of challenging um, color work project then Anna Makila and her spring is coming socks are available for free on Ravelry. Then um, another pair which I don't think I've even shown you um, as a work in progress here because I, I've made them really quickly um, are the um, uh, rainy window socks. These are from the Handmade Sock Society 3 by Curious Handmade Helen Stewart. Um, I think these maybe were sock number three, uh, pattern number three in that uh, installment. Um, and I'm, and all of, I have made almost all but one of those socks in, in that pattern series and they've all been very, very enjoyable and really, really quick knits somehow. Something about how, how they're constructed with just a little bit of pattern, sort of um, interest going on, uh, but not too much that it actually, uh, they're very still very easy TV knitting or, or, or just take, up, take with you card knitting, that sort of thing. So these are, let's see if I can just, um, these are the rainy window socks. That those are the the raindrops uh, fall, falling. Uh, I made these in uh, Arweda Classic. I think the colorway is called uh, Aqua Mist, which I think is also quite fitting. And here I've act I think I've actually made the heel according to the pattern. Um, in some of them I've substituted and, and actually made a short row heel instead, but here I have I have the reinforced heel. I think I've made it just a little bit shorter than, than intended or than uh, described in the pattern because I have a fairly low instep, so I like this heel to be a little bit lower. Yeah. Fun. Pretty. Cool. And then I think, uh, well, we have the summer socks, which I had started uh, in my last episode when I was filming on my, at my cottage, um, which I made from leftovers uh, as well. So uh, these, ha these have, have a different yarn for the, for the toe and the cuff. And then the yarn, the, the, main sort of sock uh, foot yarn <laughs> the yarn for the foot is a uni a regia uh, stretch uni it has something with a uni in the name i think i don't know why oh but anyway it's a regia stretch yarn it has uh, some acrylic or some sort of stretch yarn content in it so it it's really really um, elastic and, and keeps its shape really well. So these are, I mean, these are just sort of basic um, short, short cuff uh, summer. Well, well not, not only summer, but somehow they're a bit summery to me. Socks. No, no uh, pattern. I think I made these on 56 
stitches, which is because I wanted to, them to fit really snugly. And then I've made the, the Fish Lips Kiss heel um, in garter stitch. Um, now at this point, I, I might uh, I might just <laughs> talk talk a little bit bit about um, the definition of socks um, uh, because in in English, well, there's socks, and then there's socks. There is there is really no other word <laughs> for the concept of socks. But socks can mean uh, uh, still mean a lot of different I mean a lot of different things and can uh, look and feel very different. Um, whereas in my language, in Sweden, we have a distinction between strumpa and socka. Both are translated as socks, but strumpa and socka, and for me, strumpa, um, that's sort of... Well, it, please excuse me while I lift my foot. <laughs> that's a strumpa, uh, sort of a thin um, cotton or a cotton polyester blend sock that you wear next to your skin, which is thin, it's very, very elastic, and um, it basically protects your feet from dirt <laughs> off the floor or from your shoes, and protects your shoes from your feet. Um, and so for me, a strumpa is something that you wear on your skin, whereas a sock, for me, mostly, I wear socks as a second layer on top of my strumpa. Um, so, and that, that a sock generally has a, a wool content and uh, warming properties. Now, uh, and then you can, they can be, of course, uh, they can be thinner or they can be thicker. If they're really thick, they're, they're kind of more like boot socks. And it, we also have the word ragsokkor which we often use for, for really thick and sturdy socks. So, uh, there are many categories of socks. And why I'm talking about this is, that I, is, is to say that these were knit to be strumpor, that is worn next to the skin. Um, whereas perhaps these, because they are um, double layered basically, um, because of, of the color work, they are more more sort of warming kind. I would not wear these only not next to my skin. I would actually wear these as a second layer on top of my thin strumpor, which I'm wearing next to my skin. So, um, just a little clarification maybe for those of you who are not Swedish or Scandinavian, uh, maybe live in a different um, a different climate or a different uh, language um, setting. So these were made to be close fitting and actually worn in my shoes and as the only layer of, of socks. Whereas some of the other socks I will probably be wearing um, on top of my other thinner strumpa socks, or most of them. I think then we uh, we come to to the uh, next um, and made sock society sock. These these are the um, the vapor socks. Vapor and I have actually blocked the other one so that you can see the pattern really well. So these are kind of a bit like some little puffs of steam going up or well vapor rising from from a lake for instance um, and these just like the other ones really really enjoyable to knit and the yarn oh the yarn i i thought this yarn was just heavenly to knit with not only um it, it shows the pattern really well i think it has nice stitch definition and and it has just such such subtle and pretty patterning um, that I really I really just enjoyed knitting these and just looking at how how the sort of 
this, these little stripes and, and the pattern formed. The, the yarn, this yarn is um, Kera, Lanka Kaupa Kera. Um, she, she is a hand dyer and um, uh, yarn shop keeper right down at the south, in the south of Finland. And I bought these, no, I ordered these yarns from her at, when, when there was the online um, uh, crafts fair sometime this spring. So I have several of her. It's a merino um, nylon sock, sock blend base. Mm. And all of her, all of her colors are very sort of subtle, um, all, all kind of somehow resonate with, with nature. She lives in the archipelago and so somehow reflect the, the colors of, of, of that environment. And um, really, really, a really, really nice yarn. I'm very, very, very pretty to work with. So I really, really like, like these. Okay. Uh, and so the next, and I think the last of the finished uh, pairs of socks, I actually finished last night. And they are the final pattern in the Handmade Sock Society 3 by Helen Stewart. The um, Altitude Socks. Um, I have knit all, um, all but one um, of the, the Ceres Socks was one pattern also in, in this series, but I didn't knit those. I, I think I wasn't, I wasn't in the mood. I wasn't in the mood for those. So I, I of course I have the pattern, but I didn't actually make those. So I have made five out of the six, six handmade Soft Society patterns. And this is the final one. This was actually released only last week. So I have been really quick, <laughs> quick with this, but it was also very, very fun and easy and uh, just um, couldn't, I couldn't keep my hands off them. I just had to, had to knit. So this is, and I haven't blocked these and woven in the end, so they're not re really, really finished, but finished enough. Um, so the Altitude socks. And now these are, um, they were in the pattern, they were supposed to have these um, contrast uh, color stripes, which they have here, but they don't show that well because this this pattern is this uh, yarn is is kind of busy, and then uh, the contrast uh, toe. But I made a, I also made the contrast uh, cuff and and heel because I didn't have enough yarn. I I used used scrap yarn for this one as well, um, and the. The, the cuff, cuff, sock and toe yarn is the same yarn as this one, <laughs> the uh, rainy window socks. So that's um, Arweta classic in the colorway aqua mist. And uh, this, this other yarn is, uh, is the yarn by Stu uh, sock yarn in the colorway Gondor, which I bought and have shown you some earlier this year. I've also used this in the, in the shawl that I think I showed you in the last episode, which I won't show you in this episode, maybe in the next one. It, it's finished, but I haven't blocked it yet. Um, so, um, these are, are very um, simple and they have this sort of chevron, chevron uh, pattern right at the at the, the top and at the front of the cuff. Um, and here um, there are these two contrast stripes. Um, but they don't show that well because this yarn has that has so much color in itself. But I mean they're there, that's okay. <laughs> um, this yarn is a little bit busy. Um, the pattern might sh might have shown a little better if it, if it had been more solid, but I still love this yarn. Um, and here I've also made this, the fish lips kiss heel. But I I, I love the summer summer sort of um, um, evocation in this yarn. It it reminds me of of uh, water, of grass, of moss, of sunshine. There's kind of everything. In it so so I think these are 
they're a little bit different uh, from from all of the all of my my handmade socks socks are a little different in character and uh, but also it's also because i really like want to use um uh, leftover yarns I, I I don't like having all these hundreds of little balls lying around with you know half a sock quantity in them so I really try to use up my my uh, yarns in and and combine them in, in various ways too so so that's that was one one way of doing it in the altitude socks and so at this point, I thought that I would just um, quickly go through the socks that I've made this year that, that will go into my box of socks. And um, yeah, my sock achievements. Let's see. These are the first ones. The Totti says the Edolinen by Anna Makila. You've seen these before. Then we have the uh, 70s socks, <laughs> sock number 21, I think, by Kerstin Balke from one of her, her sock books. It's a pair number two. And then we have, let's see, um, the uh, Woodland Walk socks, which was from Kia's Bud, uh, from the Kia's Bud uh, Challenge Free Socks 2020 and by, um, patterned by this handmade life very pretty and then we have another of Kerstin Balkes um, bo uh, socks sock number 14 I think the ones which I call the upside down socks because I Turn the pattern upside down, basically. Um, also using scraps, leftovers. I really like the colorway, colorway in this one, or the col combinations. And then we come to to the handmade sock society. These and uh, the first ones were the luminary socks. Now these are. <laughs> impossibly hard to show the pattern pattern which is on the front here has these little um, star stitches this was a bit of an experiment trying with this uh, trying it out this lang yarn we'll see how those wear they can be Christmas socks And then we have um, another uh, Curious Handmade, Handmade Sock Society uh, sock, the Ambient Socks. Also a really pretty and uh, nice pattern. I like the colors in these as well. That was Lohitar and Luola uh, yarn. This Hand, hand dyed yarn. So that, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then seven, eight, um, nine, ten. Ten pairs of finished socks this year. Who knew? <laughs> I will not be lacking socks and pretty much all of these are actually my size. I think one or two of them are big enough to go to for someone who who has a slightly bigger feet than me, but mostly I just knit my own size. Because uh, well that's quickest because I have really small feet and I also like to try them on and and look at how they see how they fit my own foot. So, I will not be needing to buy I, neither socks nor strumpor in a while. And then, if we move on to works in progress, I have some more socks. Uh, 
So on the needles, I have uh, two pairs of socks. One, which is almost finished. I actually have the first sock here. And the second sock is on the final cuff. So very little left on those. Now these are a pattern called Palanen Kauneinta, which means uh, a piece of the most beautiful in Finnish um, by the Finnish designer Tina Ku. It's from her book um, Tuhansi en Villasukkien Maa. Um, and so far I think only available in that book, but I think she is also in the process of translating and updating her patterns and and uh, uh, there was some talk of, of her moving her, her designs away from Ravelry. We'll see what happens with that, but she also uh, plans to... She has lots and lots of free patterns. I don't know whether these would be a free or paid pattern. Uh, but uh, I think they are just gorgeous. Um, um, they have... Uh, apart from this um, this uh, color work border, which is right here at the cuff, they have this kind of special heel, which, let me show you the other one. It looks like this uh, from the back. Um, I hadn't knit one of these heels before. I thought it was really cool. It was, um, it was actually, it, it, it was a different way of, of going about making a heel, but it was fairly intuitive. It wasn't one of those, I, I kind of shy away from those patterns where you have to sit and look at every single line. What am I going to do? And you can't sort of, there's no intuition telling you um, where to increase or, or what to do. But this was actually fairly easy. Once you got into the hang of it, you kind of understood. Well, okay, so I knit, I, I knit this many stitches, and then I make an, a decrease, probably. So, a decorative, really nice, um, and and a bit of a new challenge way of making a heel. And uh, so these are knit from the toe up. Um, I knit these on two millimeter needles. That was actually the first time I used two millimeter needles because I knit quite uh, tightly. So I generally don't need to use that small needles that small. But this yarn, which is Johanna's Garn, um, uh, which I've also used for the vestigial socks, which I think I've shown you before. I knit those uh, late last year right before I started this podcast. I think I maybe have, may have shown them to you in, in the first, in the first um, episode. And um, uh, it's a lovely, lovely yarn. In the, it's the colorway Bloodrun. It's a merino um, polyamide blend. Um, really, really vibrant, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color. And I, I had just enough for actually a second pair of, of socks. Of that yarn um, and it's quite fine it's, it is quite thin so knitting on two millimeter millimeter needles and I think with 64 stitches uh, was just just about right for my foot size and um, I did go up a size uh, in needle I, a needle size or a quarter of a needle size or something like that for this for this um, uh, color work section and even on this and on the first one it, it goes over my heel really well but then the second one I realized I had knit just a little bit tight so it, I it's a bit of a struggle to actually get it over the heel but I will get it and I will block it try and block it quite hard so that I can I can actually so that it won't be too tight um, so and and the color and the the yarns used in in the this for this color work is um, uh, sweet Georgia a tough love sock also a leftover yarn that i used in my chamomile dreams shawl which i showed i've showed here before and the purple the dark sort of pattern color here is is um, a hundu 
Hundu um, yarn, which is also the same as I used for for the winter is coming socks. So uh, I I really try and 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 use my yarns to every last scrap in any and try and combine them any way I can. And I'm really happy with these how these turns out. I think there's something not slightly royal about them. I, I really like um, th these will be my my royal socks if I'm ever invited to the president's ball or something. This would be a fitting outfit. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so those are just about finished. And then, because it's the end of July, um, today is the last of July actually, so I just might have time to finish these. Not. But it wasn't too late to start the July sock of the Kias of the Free Socks 2020 uh, challenge, um, which is hosted by Kias Boot, the Kias Boot podcast. Um, and these are the Thunder and Lightning socks by Don Henderson. So I, I started these, um, I think, uh, two nights ago, and I have been knitting away. <laughs> Not hoping to finish within July, but but having started in July at least, and thinking, well, and if you recognize the yarn, it's because it's the same Sweet Georgia yarn, which I have just a little bit left still. I hope it's enough to finish this one sock. Um, it's the same that I used here and in the shawl that I just mentioned. Um, so I have enough for one sock. Now this, these are called thunder, thunder and Lightning. So if this is Lightning, this is Thunder. I'm going to knit the other one in a black yarn. Just because I can. Um, and just because I, I have this yarn that I need to do something with. It's, it's not enough for two socks, it's not enough for a big project, but it's enough for a uh, short sock. So. Thunder and lightning socks. Where, what occasion will I come up with wear those? Who knows? Halloween maybe. Um, but um, the pattern is really, really uh, fun and cool and, and I think it looks, looks really nice. And the sweet Georgia yarn is just heavenly to knit with as well. Really, really, really nice. This yarn is a dream in color smooshy, a discontinued yarn. It's from, my, it's from my deep, deep stash. Um, I have no recollection of what I have actually used it for. Um, and it's not, it's, um, it's not actually black, black. It is hand dyed and a little bit semi-solid. So quite nice. Yeah, so those are my those are all my soft projects that are, are ongoing at the moment. Now, I also have one more uh, ongoing project that is not a soft project. Um, which, let's see if I can untangle it. It's the Whippet cardigan. Now, this is difficult to show. And I have, I have circulars holding my life, life sleeve stitches, so I have just needles everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that flattering? <laughs> it's the Wicked Cardigan. Maybe I'll just put a, a, a pattern picture up here, then you can have some sort of uh, estimation of what it's, what it's supposed to look like when it's finished. Um, it's a really, really lightweight. Um, uh, summer, well, cardigan that would be useful in the summer, just as something very light to wear over over your short short sleeved garments. Uh, it has this. It's it's a cleverly constructed, a very well written pattern. It's quite an old pattern. I think it was really popular maybe about five years ago or so. But hey, I'm not known for being trendy in any way, so I don't mind being late to the party. 
I think this will look just as good in 2020. Um, and I've, as I, I've just divided um, or the, the, not divided, but actually put these stitches on the, so these stitches on hold and continued working the body. And from this point on, uh, there will be a, a lace pattern going down the whole body. Now, that doesn't really show. I have just made a couple of repeats of the lace bag pattern so far. Um, I'm, work I'm using Holst Super Soft again in the colorway Marlin. Uh, and this, um, of course, has been knit back and forth, so there has been a lot of purling, but it's not too bad. Um, I can live with, with the purling. I think maybe I've I've learned to relax a bit more when purling. I used to get really it used to be really painful for my hands and, and neck and, and stuff. But I think it's it's not too bad now. And it's not as slow as it used to be. Purling used to be kind of slow, but it's 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 better now. So and it's actually uh, progressing quite fast even though um, it's on 3.75 millimeter needles at the moment. The first part was 3.5 and now it's th the lace part is 3.75. So yeah, uh, I mean the super soft, I mean it's not wonderful uh, to work with when it's un unwashed or, or the, the way that it comes on, on in the cakes. Uh, but I know that once I wash it and block it and perhaps wash it a, a few times, it will really, really soften. So the, the result um, will be rewarding in the end, even though, even though uh, perhaps the process or the feel of the yarn isn't that wonderful while working with it. Um, so that, that is my summer garment that is um, in progress. And now I just had my phone um, run out of battery there a second ago, so I've had to recharge, recharge and start start again. And I've, I just looked at some of my footage and I realized I'm, I'm kind of looking past the camera a little bit. And that's because I can see my screen, myself on the screen just over there. Um, and um, so if I'm not all completely focused on camera all the time, that's why, because I'm trying to see what I'm actually looking, what I actually look like. Um, but I wanted to come, just come quickly come back to the subject of socks for, for a sec um, and the challenge Free Socks 2020 hosted by Kia's board, because she just released the, or revealed the, the August sock, the August pattern that um, we are knitting for that challenge, or those of us who are, those who knit, I have only knitted two socks so far. Um, but the August pattern is the Broken Seed Stitch Socks by Hanna Levanniemi, or it's more like a pattern recipe. It's a, it's a recipe for how to knit socks with the Broken Seed Stitch. Now it so happens that this is a pattern that I have used and knitted several times in the past. Uh, not recently, not this year, it's a few years ago I found this pattern and, and quite liked it and knit several socks uh, using this recipe. And I still have those socks and I thought that I would just show you what, sort of in advance show you what, what that pattern looks like knitted up and how you can maybe give, give you a, an idea of how, how to use different yarns and how that will affect how that pattern, how, how, what it looks like. So I have actually three pairs of socks here um, in, in that um, broken seat stitch uh, pattern. Now, um, the first one, this is, uh, looks a bit like this. As you can see, it's it's had some use. It's a bit, a bit faded at, at the bottom. And here, 
I've ha I've actually knitted. You you can see I've used a um, a um, multicolor yarn or a hand dyed yarn. It's Lorna's laces, I believe, for for one of the colors, and then I've used a solid dark blue for the rest. Um, or for the sets as the second color. And here I have actually continued the seed stitch all across the heel as well. Uh, I think that in the pattern you actually um, just use make regular stripes um, in at, on the foot or on the on the sort of base of the foot. And I have used that done that for, for my other socks as well. Um, but this is one example. Then I have another one. Now, uh, sensitive viewers, be warned. This is a pair of socks that have been really, really well worn. So they, they don't have a heel anymore. I'm still using them. I use my socks until there's basically nothing left of them. So don't don't look too closely on all, on all of that. <laughs> but this is actually the same yarn, the same yarn as as that previous one. Um, so this one, you can see that the cuff, well, one is actually one by one rib and the other is two by two rib, but it's the same yarn. This is with a dark contrasting color. This is with a, a light um, contrasting color um, and um, so a light pink. And that's how that turns out. And you can see here that the, the sort of base is, I won't show you that broken heel. <laughs> the base is is really worn, uh, but that has the stripes and no uh, seed stitch at the bottom there. Okay, I won't torment you <laughs> with my broken socks. But then I have also have, have this, this one, um, which I think is really nice. I, I really like how vibrant these colors are. Oh, some cat hair. Um, um, and so here is a um, blue dark or sort of a teal turquoise semi-solid um, base, if you like, and then it has these this really multicolor multicolor contrast uh, yarn, which also has some blue in it. So it kind of disappears in between, and then but then it also has these really um, strong accents of orange and red and. And that becomes really, in, to me, is, is a really pretty and, and cool sock. And that's, and all of these have been used, have been knitted using, using this um, broken seed stitch pattern. Now, uh, needless to say, I won't be participating in, in the sock challenge with these socks. Um, I don't think I will, I will be knitting a pair of, of these in August either. Well, who knows? I have enough uh, scrap yarns, so um, it would be perfectly possible. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a fun pattern and, and it's really fun to, to use these uh, different uh, uh, colors and, and just see what happens when you combine them in this way. Um, I mean, the seed stitch pattern is really, really easy and, and just it's, it's amazing what kind of effect you actually get by just combining stitches and colors in different ways. So that's, that's the, the autumn, the autumn, the August sock a bit in advance. Um, and I also just want to finish off uh, today with a little tip about um, a series of audio um, podcasts or a series of interviews, or rather knitterviews, the Vogue Knitting Knitterviews. Um, you, you, may be, you may have heard them, you may be familiar with them, especially maybe if you've been a knitter for a long time, but if you're a fairly new, new knitter, that you may not have heard, know, know about these or have heard them, because uh, they're not um, exactly recent. They're not made now. Now I'm not sure what year they were recorded, but a few years, few years ago, I think. 
um, but they're very interesting. Uh, they they talk, um, they interview uh, people in the industry, uh, designers, um, hand dyers, um, other people who 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 are many of them are are giants. <laughs> have been in the industry for a long time and have a, a very broad perspective on knitting and the traditions of knitting. Now those are the kind of things that I I kind of enjoy. I'm not so much into to trendy and um, what's hot right now and, and the next big thing. I I kind of like the, the broad perspective of the craft. Um, so if that's your thing, the Vogue Knitting Knitter Views are available at least on Spotify and you can also find them uh, through uh, the Vogue Knitting um, um, website. Um, and I especially enjoyed one interview with, with the founder and director of um, Koigu Yarns. Now when I started, um, or when, when I became familiar with the knitting community back in sort of 2005 or something. Um, hand dyed yarns were quite a new phenomenon and Koigu yarns were one of the first to really uh, explore and, and produce these hand painted hand dyed yarns with many different colors and, and all the nuances and shapes that we are familiar with today and are, are kind of a staple today, but they weren't back then. And so um, the the dyer behind the koigu yarns uh, talks in, deep, in in very interesting uh, and a very inter interesting view uh, interview with her on among those podcasts about how it all started and, and what their idea was and, and how she looked how she feels about uh, the industry today and, and yarn dyeing and, and so on very very interesting so yep. That's my tip. If you're still on holiday and you still have some time, um, listen, listen to some knitter, knitterly stuff in your um, while you're knitting in your sun chair or something. But I think that's it for me this time. Um, enjoy the rest of, of your summer. Um, enjoy all the sunlight and, and the daylight and, and the beauty of, of nature um, as long as you can. Sleep, rest, enjoy yourself, enjoy your knitting. Until next time. Bye.